Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian Alford here with Dragon Blogger and on this video I'm going to show you guys how to use Open Broadcaster software. I think it is an incredible piece of software to use for those of you out there who want to do Let's Play videos. If you want to go online to Twitch and do Twitch videos like live streaming. Um, or if you just want to record with your webcam and do uh, little like YouTube videos um, like the Venom's Rant videos that I do, stuff like that on my channel. Um, absolutely, by all means, uh, this is a great piece of software to use, uh, and it's free. That's the best part. It's free, and you're there, and there's no limit um, to, as far as I know, the, to to the record time on here. So I'm going to show you guys how to use this. Uh, it's very simple. You guys can see I've got it up right now. Um, it looks a little trippy there with the uh, <laughs> window inception. You guys can kind of see that, um, but let's just do this. So when you first oh, oh when you first open up. Uh, open broadcaster software. This uh, is not what you're going to see. It's actually going to be blank. Nothing's going to be here uh, at all. Um, the, the most important part of the open broadcaster software really is going to be this down here. You're really going to be messing with this area right here a lot with your scenes, your sources, um, and this little control panel right here. Um, that is what you're going to really be messing with. So when you first open OBS, um, this is going to be blank, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right-click on Scenes. Now you can see here it says Game Capture, and you can see the sources, the video camera, which is me right here, hello, and the monitor capture, which shows everything on my monitor, obviously. So what you're going to do is you're going to right-click on Scenes, and it's gonna, you're going to go right to Add a Scene. You can name your scene, so if you want to do just like Game Capture, which is what I do, or if you say are wanting to play uh, or stream a game, you could actually type the name of the game because it just depends uh, if you are if you have different setups for different games, like if you have overlays for Super Meat Boy or overlays for Mark of the Ninja, things like that. Um, <clears throat> if you if you have different setups for each game that you do with borders and stuff like that on the game, then I would suggest at least typing the name. So for just for uh, fun here. We're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do Mark of the Ninja. So we'll enter that, and it's gonna go blank. So for all intents and purposes, I'm just gonna go back to Game Capture so you guys can see me, and I'll tell you what you would do. So after you've already got your scene here, this is gonna be blank. So we're just gonna pretend that this is blank for a minute, and you would end up right clicking on the Sources box here. Go to Add. And you're gonna hover over it, and it's gonna give you all these wonderful options here. So we'll start from the top. So you got window capture, which is obviously if you want a window, if you want to capture the window, whatever window you want to pop up here. It's going to give you a list of those here. If you want to capture the mouse or not, all that fun stuff is going to be right there. Uh, wouldn't mess with any of that stuff down there. You're probably not going to mess with any of that um, good stuff down there. Go back to add. You've got monitor capture, which is what I'm using right now uh, to capture this lovely video I'm doing. Um, you can name the mon you can name everything you uh, all your you can always name all your scenes or your sources you can name them. Uh, for those of you who have two monitors, like if you have a laptop and a PC or two PCs, two laptops, etc., um, it is going to be able to pick that up here. Obviously, you can tell I'm running one monitor, so it's only going to show me with one monitor. You can decide whether or not you want your uh, mouse to be captured on the video, and then obviously this stuff here, which you're probably not going to use. Um, Moving on along, we'll go to the next one, which is image. This is if you want to put an overlay on your uh, on your scene. So you just click browse. It's going to pop up your file explorer uh, for those of you who have Windows 8 um, and uh, or Windows 7, whatever. And then that way you can go find your image, and then you can move it around on here as you choose. Right-click again, we'll go to uh, Image Slideshow. Um, that's for if you want to have s a slideshow up, um, which is pretty helpful for things like if you have a Twitter, if you have a Facebook associated with your channel, um, things like that. You can actually set that in one of the corners up here on your scene. And um, you can actually have that cycle through all that information, which is pretty neat. Uh, which is something I might uh, come think of it. I might even put that on my videos. That way it cycles through like our Twitter accounts, our Facebook accounts, etc. So that might be something you want to do as well. Uh, also, same with image. Once again, uh, if you want to put an overlay, like a like your like 
say for instance our dragon blogger logo you could overlay that you know on one of the corners of your um of your video here too as well keep that up global source uh i don't even know what that is don't ask i don't i've not used it yet text obviously if you want to type text on your screen you can video capture device um that is go into that here and that is your webcam so for instance, you guys can see the only webcam I have is the one built into my laptop. That's the HD webcam there. Uh, if you want to flip the image vertically, horizontally, you can do all that fun stuff. You can customize the resolution of your webcam, uh, which I don't recommend. Um, it should automatically detect all that good stuff there as well. So yeah. And probably the most important thing for those of you using this for game play videos is game capture. And uh, let's see if I hit OK here. So this is going to show you a list of everything you can capture. So if I wanted to capture Chrome, I wanted to capture my sticky notes I have up, or my Skype. Uh, once you start a game on your computer, you'll click refresh, and then it should pop up whatever game it would be. So for instance, for the market for Mark of the Ninja, I would uh, simply go over here, click on that, open that up, and then hit refresh here, and then that should pop up. And then I would just click it, and it would automatically go to uh, that particular game. As well so having done all that that's that's pretty easy I mean it's pretty easy to really set up a scene um, now as far as overlays go so top to bottom is how things are layered on the on your uh, videos so like my monitor capture is my main screen I've got my video camera over that okay and I don't know if I can do it live or not I don't think it will let me yeah it will so you can see there if I switch these around Monitor captures on top, video cameras on bottom. You can't see me anymore um, unless I put the video camera on top of the monitor capture and I'm back. So it's that easy. Um, also, uh, that would be the same way for like if you have images, stuff like that. You want to make sure you've got your overlays set up properly so you have it layered properly. So for instance, you would have, um, you would obviously have the uh, whatever uh, images more than likely between the video camera and the monitor capture. Those would go in between here. That way you can edit them. Speaking of editing, so say you've got your scene finally done. You've got it set up, right? You've got it layered, etc. Now you want to edit it, right? So what you would do is, and I can't do it, unfortunately, for some reason it won't let me do this while I'm recording. You would click on edit scene. So say we've done that, okay? We're just going to go into pretend mode here. Say we've done that. You would uh, left click on edit scene, and then what it would do is, uh, depending on whichever of these amazing things you've uh, set up on your sources, you would click on that. So say, let's pretend we've clicked on my video camera, which is down here, right? What would happen is you would double click, you can actually double click on it, and what it will allow you to do is effectively move it, um, which I don't know if it will let me do it or not. I'm not going to attempt to do it right now, but you would just double click on it, and you'd drag it. So I'd be able to move my scene anywhere in here. And yeah, okay, I can do it. Cool. So I'd be able to move myself. Look at that. Ooh. So I can move myself around if I want. Or I could make the video <laughs> make the video bigger, make it really small. Um, it's whatever. Same with the monitor. I could make it you know, uh, smaller. I could make the actual monitor smaller if I wanted to. I could actually take it away, um, etc. So I mean, you could do, you could effectively do all of that with all of your sources here as well. Um, same with your images. You would just click on whatever as you can see here. It's going to be highlighted. It's going to be outlined in red, and you can see the drag boxes in the corner. So I mean, you basically can just move your whole entire scene around. Or you can double click on the actual things in OBS as well that you want to move around. So, so yeah, so we'll go back to normal here, uh, which is nice. It gives you the ability to adjust it, tinker with it, um, whatever your heart's desire is as far as how you want things on your scene to look and be assorted on there. It's kind of nice to be able to do that. So, uh, we'll get out of edit scene now, and you just click on it again. You just click on edit scene to get out of it. So, now you've got your scene set up. You've got your sources set up. You've got everything layered, right? You go to record your video, and it's choppy. 
Um, it's delayed. Uh, your gameplay video is really lagging behind. Your it, you just it doesn't. Uh, it, it's too slow or too fast, etc. And you kind of wonder, well, how the heck do I fix that? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So you're gonna go over here and click settings, or you can go up here and click settings. Doesn't matter which one. You can go here. It's faster if you just go right here. And this is your overall OBS settings. So for those of you who don't speak English, you can go mess with this. Um, that's that. And then you've got your encoding. What I was just doing here is keep it at X twenty uh, at X two sixty four. Don't use quick sync. Whatever you do, uh, the Nvidia is going to be grayed out unless you have an Nvidia chip uh, chipset in there or a video uh, graphics card. Um, I would recommend using the NVIDIA graphic. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card in your CPU or in your computer, um, use the NVIDIA uh, encoding. It's going to help you out so much. It's going to be easier that way. Do not use CBR. Quality balance. What this does is, is if you keep it at 10, for those of you who don't have a very high-powered computer such as myself, don't go straight to 10. I would suggest keeping it somewhere around 7 7 would be a good middle ground. 6 would be on the low end. 8 would be on the little bit of the high end. But I always keep mine at 7 just because I don't have the most high-powered computer. Bit rate. Uh, this is going to be like your upload speed, basically, your max bit, uh, max bit rate. I would suggest uh, doing a speed test at speedtest.net. Go in from there, find out what your overall upload speed is, and then adjust this accordingly. I've got mine set at 25,000. Because the higher for me, usually, the better. It just depends. Um, you could use my settings and go from there and see what it is. Uh, and then just kind of adjust accordingly. Okay, so what's going to probably happen is you're going to have to probably do several videos, uh, test videos, before you finally get it down. And it's going to probably end up being different for everything you record. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Broadcast settings. Okay, so once you get here for the first time, it's going to look like this. You don't want it to look like this if you're not live streaming. So if you're not using Twitch or Ustream, please, please, whatever you do, do not use live stream. Go right to file output only. That way it just saves your videos to your desktop, and that's it. Um, or not to your desktop, but to your computer. So when you first get in here for the first time, you're going to see file path there. It's going to look like this. For those of you who don't know what FLV means, that's flash video. Don't do flash video. By all means, it, it's going to be bad. Don't do flash video. I highly suggest going to MP4. A lot of people out there, uh, like myself, were wondering, well, how the heck do I change it? I, I don't want flash video. I want to be able to use MP4 or at least MP3 or, or, or MPG videos, MP videos, whatever. This is how you change your file type. Um, so you change that to MP4 or whatever other you know video format you want to use, AVI, whatever. Uh, I always stick with MP4 because those videos usually turn out the best. Don't mess with anything else below file path here. Don't. Don't touch this. I highly suggest you don't mess with that. Okay. Move around on to video. This is where you can see your graphics card. Obviously, I have Intel HD graphics. <laughs> Not really the best. Um, custom uh, base resolution. So when you first get here, it's going to look like this. It's going to automatically find out what your monitor's resolution is and adjust it accordingly. I would, I would advise against this. Go to custom. Depending on the power of your computer, uh, for those of you in the middle to low end, like myself, you want to do 1280 by 720 and do 720. That way your aspect ratio is 69. Uh, and go with a 1280 by 720 or 720 display. For those of you who do 1080, try 1080. Um, <clears throat> if you have a high-powered computer, you probably want to do 1080 video. Um, down here, don't mess with resolution downscale at all. Just don't do it. Trust me. FPS. Once again, if you're in the middle of the lower end, like I am on a computer, you want to keep it at 30 frames per second. For those of you who can do 1080 and really uh, get a lot of power out of your computer, I would suggest changing this, not to 32, <laughs> change it to 60. However, we're going to keep it at 30 because my computer is not that great when it comes to graphics. Audio. This is going to show your audio device. Right now you can see I'm using my studio microphone, which is right here. Audio uh, d default desktop audio device. 
I always use it. I always I always use default there. Um, so make sure when you record your video um, that you've got your microphone chosen chosen here. Uh, if you go to default and you have several audio uh, or microphones there, it, I would suggest just making sure you select the one you want to use. Okay, definitely go with that. Hotkeys, uh, these are kind of nice, uh, especially if you're streaming, you're broadcasting on Twitch. So, I mean, if you want to not, like, have to go back and pull up OBS and all that crap, especially while you're streaming, that's, you, you don't want to do that while you're streaming. People don't want to see that while you're streaming. So, what you want to do is you could just type in, like, an F key here. Um, you know, like, say, say you want F11 to be your, you could just hit F11, and it pops up, start stream. And then if you want F10 to stop stream, etc., start recording, stop recording, all that good stuff there. Um, advanced, I don't mess with this. Um, well, wait, I take that back. Yes, you do. So for me, since I, ha I want to try to get the most out of my computer, um, the thing is, is if you set this to a higher value, it reduces your CPU usage. So... Since I don't have a very high-powered computer, I put this up to ultra-fast because it reduces my CPU. And actually, that's how I was able to make my videos record a lot smoother was by putting this to ultra-fast. So it just depends on your, uh, on, your, on, your, uh, on your video, on your graphics card, stuff like that, your, your processor, things like that. Uh, I put this at ultra fast. It's going to tell you don't. It's going to advise you. Uh, OBS is going to advise you don't do it. Screw that. I went ahead and did it anyway, um, and it worked out just fine for me. Uh, quick sync encoder. This is going to be grayed out. I was just not using quick sync encoder at all. Um, this is going to show your microphone, uh, the threshold, stuff like that. How high you want your decibels to be um, when you're talking. You're going to see that it's going to move every time I speak. <laughs> all right, and that's that. So that's that's how you use uh, open broadcaster software also before i forget you can start recording here stop recording here you can go start streaming here stop streaming there also for streaming purposes um you would actually go to uh actually once you click start streaming it's going to ask you your source you type in your twitch account password all that good stuff your twitch key which you'll find on twitch.tv um stuff like that and then that way you can link your stream to your obs all that good stuff but that's it this is how you use open broadcaster software hope you've enjoyed this video uh i will provide a link at the bottom in the description on where to download obs um, I highly recommend this for those of you out there who are streaming and want a free program and don't want to have to pay for your uh, broadcasting software, stuff like that. This is a very easy way to record um, Let's Play videos, streaming purposes, stuff like that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is Brian once again. There's going to be a lot more videos to come here on our Dragon Blogger YouTube channel, some more Let's Play videos from me. Other than that, that's it. Take it easy, guys.